there's SpaceX, Elon Musk's rocket empire that redefined space travel. But what if I told you there's another player rising quietly from the far side of the world, taking direct aim at Musk's throne? This is Rocket Lab, born not in Silicon Valley, but in New Zealand. From the mind of a man who never went to college, worked at an appliance factory, and once built a rocket-powered bike in his spare time. In just a few years, Rocket Lab has become the second most launched rocket company in the world. And with their new rocket, the Neutron, they're preparing for the ultimate gamble, taking on SpaceX directly. Before Rocket Lab was competing with SpaceX, it was just one man in New Zealand, Peter Beck. Unlike Elon Musk, Beck didn't have a Silicon Valley network, venture capital, or even a college degree. He worked at a dishwasher factory. But after hours, Beck was something else entirely. He once turbocharged his family's Mini Cooper and built a rocket-powered bicycle in his spare time. A garage inventor with one obsession, space. Using factory equipment, Beck began secretly testing rocket parts. He wasn't just tinkering, he was teaching himself rocket science, one weld and one burn test at a time. In 2006, he took a bold step. He flew to NASA to share his vision. But NASA wasn't interested in backyard dreamers, so that same year, Beck decided to do it himself. And so in June 2006, Rocket Lab was born. The goal was simple but revolutionary, make space access cheaper and more flexible than SpaceX. Instead of billion dollar satellites and long waits, Rocket Lab wanted to give smaller companies control, cheaper launches, on-demand schedules, and the ability to choose their own orbits. What started as one man's obsession was about to become New Zealand's ticket to space. Rocket Lab may have started in a garage, but it didn't take long to draw attention. The New Zealand government, realizing the potential, invested in the company. For a nation better known for sheep and rugby, this was the first step into the global space race. By 2009, just three years after its founding, Rocket Lab became the first private company in the Southern Hemisphere to reach space, a historic milestone achieved not by NASA, not by SpaceX, but by a handful of engineers in New Zealand. At the time, SpaceX was still struggling for survival with only a handful of successful launches. Against all odds, Rocket Lab had just put New Zealand on the map. This was more than just a scientific achievement. It was proof, proof that Peter Beck's vision wasn't just a crazy dream. Rocket Lab had the government's backing, momentum, and a foothold in the global launch industry. And their next step? To build a rocket unlike anything the world had ever seen. While SpaceX was building giant steel rockets, Rocket Lab took a very different path. Their flagship, the Electron, wasn't designed to carry astronauts or massive payloads. Instead, it was built for agility. The Electron runs on the Rutherford engine, the first rocket engine in history to be 3D printed almost entirely. Pumps, injectors, even the combustion chamber, all manufactured with precision printers. The result? A rocket engine with an astonishing 95% efficiency. And it wasn't just the engine. The rocket's body was crafted from carbon composites, a technology borrowed from New Zealand's yacht racing industry. Lightweight, strong, and perfect for spaceflight. Each launch costs around just $7.5 million, a fraction of traditional rockets. Customers don't just get a cheaper ride, they get control. Pick your launch window, pick your orbit, Rocket Lab delivers. Today, the Electron is the second most launched rocket in the world. Rocket Lab now handles six out of every 10 orbital launches that don't come from SpaceX. For small satellites and startups, 
Rocket Lab became the go-to gateway to space. In just a few years, a backyard experiment had become one of the most reliable and innovative rocket programs on the planet. Rocket Lab's ambitions were about to expand far beyond the launch pad. Rocket Lab knew that if they were going to survive against SpaceX, they needed more than rockets. They needed to control the entire pipeline. So Beck went on a buying spree. Rocket Lab acquired satellite component companies, bringing manufacturing in-house. From reaction wheels to solar panels, they built everything themselves. No outsourcing, no middlemen, just control. They didn't stop at components. Rocket Lab began building and launching their own satellites, transforming from just a delivery service into a full space solutions company. The results? Explosive growth. $436 million in revenue, up 78% year on year. In the second quarter of 2025 alone, they pulled in $144 million. But Beck wasn't chasing quarterly earnings. Every dollar was fuel for a bigger gamble, a leap into the same arena as SpaceX itself. And that gamble was called Neutron. Rocket Lab's Electron dominated the small satellite market. But Peter Beck knew the real money and the real fight was in medium lift rockets. That meant taking on the Falcon 9 head on. So, in 2021, Rocket Lab announced Neutron. Standing 40 meters tall, it can lift 15,000 kilograms into orbit, a rocket 10 times more powerful than Electron. Neutron isn't just another rocket, its design flips convention. The rocket fairing doesn't split in half and fall into the ocean. It opens like a hungry hippo, then closes again, ready for reuse a bold engineering gamble, and powering it all is the new Archimedes engine, 3D printed, lightweight, and built for rapid turnaround. Just like Falcon 9, Neutron is designed to land and fly again, keeping costs low. With Neutron, Rocket Lab is no longer playing in the margins. This is their shot at the mainstream, a rocket that could finally challenge SpaceX's dominance. But stepping into SpaceX's territory is risky. The cost of failure? Catastrophic. The reward? A place at the table of the $64 billion space launch market of the future. The answer lies in the bigger picture. The space industry is no longer science fiction. Today, the global launch services market is worth $16 billion. By 2034, it's projected to explode to over 64 billion. SpaceX may dominate headlines, but there's room for challengers. Rocket Lab has carved out a unique niche, affordable, flexible launches for small and mid-sized customers, a market Elon Musk isn't always focused on. By offering control over timing and orbits and by keeping satellite production in-house, Rocket Lab has positioned itself as more than a rocket company. They're becoming an end-to-end -end space solutions provider. With the Electron already proven and Neutron on the horizon, Rocket Lab is one of the only companies bold enough to step onto SpaceX's battlefield. The question isn't whether Rocket Lab will survive. It's whether they can scale. If they succeed, they won't just be another rocket company. They'll be a symbol that even a factory worker from New Zealand can challenge the giants of Silicon Valley. In just under two decades, Rocket Lab has gone from a rocket-powered bicycle to one of the most ambitious challengers in the global space industry. Peter Beck didn't have a college degree, a billionaire's fortune, or Silicon Valley connections. What he had was obsession, grit, and the belief that space should belong to more than just the superpowers. Today, Rocket Lab is the world's second most launched rocket company. Tomorrow, with Neutron, they'll go head to head with SpaceX in a $64 billion market. Will Rocket Lab dethrone SpaceX? 
or will they carve out a new empire of their own? Only time will tell. One thing is certain, Rocket Lab has already proven that even from the far side of the world, you can reach the stars. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and join us as we explore more stories of the companies and ideas shaping our future in space. Until next time, keep looking up.